Hi, welcome to the lecture on groups. Um, if you're not a Harry Potter fan or a Mean Girls fan, I'm sorry that my images on the other side make no sense to you. But also, if you're not a Mean Girls fan, I don't know that we can be friends. So, sorry. Uh, I want to talk to you about what makes up a social group. A few things that make up social groups. One, so social groups are people who interact with each other and share a sense of identity. People who also have a shared set of social expectations and values. Basically, people you have stuff in common with and that you see a lot are your social group. Now, I'm going to get into more detail about what that means, but I do like to give you the caveat that of all the lectures, this one's probably going to be the most brief because groups are something we're going to talk about a lot throughout the semester. Um, not just today, but throughout our time together. It's one of the basis of sociology. So I'm just going to give you a few terms, a few things to kind of give you a frame of reference for how sociologists look at groups. Um, oh, there it is, people who feel a sense of membership. So we have a couple different types of groups. You have your in-groups, right? Your in-groups are people that you feel a sense of loyalty toward, that you feel a sense of belonging in. They're the people that are your people, right? So. Um, I give the example of Beyonce fans, music fans are a really good example of in-groups, uh, Harry Potter literature fans. Um, if you were in like some sort of group in high school, the band or sports or anything like that, those are good examples of in-groups. Um, fans of stuff, right? Like here's my Christmas Yoda. My husband is a huge Star Wars fan. So we have a bunch of Star Wars stuff hanging around. Um, another good way of thinking about in-groups is if you're part of any sort of community, so these are some of my medals from running races around Orlando and in Disney World, right? So that's my in-group. I see them as something that I am very proud to be a part of. Also, these Disney medals are amazing, you guys. Look at how big this is, right? Like my whole head, not my whole head, but part of my head could be covered by this. But I'm very proud to be a part of this community. I feel very loyal to it. Sorry, I hope you didn't have the sound too loud. Um, I feel very loyal to it. Out groups are a little different. Out groups are where you may feel like you're a bit of what's called the other, right? So you don't feel that you belong and you don't want to belong. Um, again, Harry Potter reference, uh, Slytherin. Slytherin House was very much the out group compared to the other three houses. A um, couple examples. One way to think about this is sports and sporting teams. So I am from Michigan. And my dad bought these for, for my, me and my husband a few years ago. My husband is a Bears fan. He was born in Chicago. I am from Michigan. Uh, I have grown up with the Lions. I don't need any comments about how much they suck. I know I'm from Michigan. Anywho, if you're a sports fan and your team is, not, is playing the other team that's like its rival team, so when the Bears play the Lions, um, these two groups are going to see themselves as a bit of outgroups, right? You feel antagonistic toward the other one, like, my team is so much better than yours. No, it's not. Yes, it is. You know, you get the point. Uh, another way to think about in and out groups is some of the fads that we've seen. If you saw this a few years ago on social media, this dress was going around and you were supposed to look at it and decide if it was blue or gold. I think it was two different dresses, but whatever. Um, and people really got into it, right? Like, how can you not see a blue dress? It's clearly gold. There's something wrong with you if you don't see the gold dress. Same thing with for a while, there was, you hit a button and you would either hear Yanni or Laurel. And like the Laurel people thought the Yanni people were nuts for not hearing Laurel or for not hearing Yanni and et cetera. These are out groups. Your primary group, your primary group are your closest closest, most basic, intimate people. This can be your family, your peers, your friends. Um, you have some sort of face-to-face -face interaction with them. They have a big influence on your development. Like these are your people. These are the people that you would uh, not care if they saw you in, on your worst day, that you do not feel the need to look your best for, that you will ugly cry in front of that you can share really deep, intimate parts of your lives, your hopes, your fears, your dreams, all of that. And these people will be there and listen and take you seriously. That's your primary group. Oh, here's ugly crying. I forgot I had this on here. Uh, Kim Kardashian is just such a good ugly crier. If you've gotten into any of my other lectures yet, I know nothing about the Kardashians, but I, I do know she's really good at the ugly cry. Um, secondary groups. And I apologize in general, this is like the whitest white group of people 
<laughs> but I needed a visual and this was as best as I could do. Um, secondary groups are tend to be impersonal groups of people. Um, they're relationships that aren't permanent. So things like this class is a secondary group. You will probably all never be together again meeting virtually to talk about sociology. That's probably not going to happen. Um, people you work with may fall into a secondary group, especially if you work in a job where there's a lot of tur turnover. So how do people conform to groups? Uh, there's a few reasons. First is group pressure. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Um, second is obedience to authority. Most of us have some sort of need to like go along with what the rules are. Not all of them, because sometimes rules are stupid. But we have some sort of desire to ab abide by some of them. Groupthink. So groupthink may be like one of the main largest reasons why people conform to groups. Groupthink's characteristics are that you have some sort of loyalty to the group. You have some sort of desire for harmony, so you don't want to rock the boat. You are going to minimize the conflict in the group by conforming. And um, it's going to lead to some sort of group decision making. So groupthink basically means that you are abiding by whatever the group has decided is okay or acceptable because you want to kind of keep the peace and go along with what everyone else is doing. So if you've ever been, and this is a really basic example, but if you've ever been around a group of friends and everybody wants to have pizza for dinner and you want to have Chinese food and you could sit there and fight and say, no, you know, this place is so much better. It's so much better than this pizza place. Or you can say, all right, fine, I'll have pizza with you. Right? That's groupthink. If you've ever been around a group of people taking it up a step where suddenly everybody says, you know, it would be great if we just slipped this lipstick in our purses and walked out the door with it and, that, and didn't pay for it. And everybody else starts sliding a lipstick into their purse. And you're like, oh, God, if I do this, I could get caught. But if I don't, they may not like me. And what do I do? So you slide the lipstick in and you leave. Right. This is groupthink. All right. Short but brief lecture on groups. Stuff we're going to come back to a lot. Uh, thanks for listening. See you later.